Well hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, this is Ruth. Today we are going to have a look at some snowflakes and then I'm going to show you how to make one. Now I've got them all in this little container ready to travel because they're going on a tree tomorrow. Now these are all quilled using different sizes of paper. This is 3mm paper. That's 3mm from top to, bottom, uh, top to bottom. And this pattern is the teardrop pattern or water drop, whatever you like to call it, but I call it the teardrop because that's what everybody else calls it. This also is a teardrop and 3mm paper. And I've just quilled the little shapes, glued them together and put a wee gem on the front and on the, the back so that they look pretty. And why all green? Because that's the colour theme of the house I'm visiting tomorrow is green. This one's a really dark one so I've gilded it with a little splash of gold just to lighten it up and give it a little bit more less darkness. <laughs> not so not so dark. Okay, this one I used a smaller piece of paper instead of using a thirty centimeter long paper I used 15 and it really does decrease the size of the snowflake in comparison to uh, one of similar shape which is this one you can see that it is totally different it's the same width paper but just different lengths actually I think this one might be 2 mil because it's a little bit narrower but once again, the little piece of bling in the center and a little piece of gold braid at the top just finishes it off nicely. This one I used quite a bit thicker. I think that's about, um, oh heck, I can't remember. I can't remember, I'm sorry. But as you can see, it's a lot thicker. And once again, same type of pattern I used a smaller piece of the paper, smaller length, and it's given me a smaller, again, a medium sized snowflake. And this one gets a little more complicated because it's got the teardrops and then it's got eyes. Now the eyes come into here, into those little peaky pieces, and the rest are all teardrops. And this one is a little more ornate. It's got the V coil here. You use one piece of paper, fold it in half, and then you coil only some of it. So you end up with a V and then the scroll. And the that one there, sorry, goes up. This one comes down. And I've got the large eyes here and a smell. No, that's a teardrop, I beg your pardon, the eyes are in here. So the one that we're going to have a, a shot at today, I'll just pop those back in the container so that I know they're in there safely. They're fairly delicate, so you've got to be reasonably careful what you're doing with them. The one I made out of white paper, and it's got the most, most pale green tint to that star. It really is quite pretty. But that is a five or six mil piece of paper but I thought I would show you on the larger size paper so we've got I'll just leave that one up there so you can see what we're going to be doing I've got the larger piece of paper and I've already pre-made lots and lots of shapes so I'm not trying to be funny or professional or anything but these do take their time when you're making a dozen of them because you need six around here and then six on the outside. So you've got to have it fairly well done before you start showing anyone. And I'm using a battery run tool today because that is also quicker and it's a lot easier on my hands. It's a slotted tool that you put the piece of paper into the slot and then you press the button and watch this. It is so much quicker. Whoops. That might not turn out very neat. Let's have a look. Ah, oh, it's not too bad. Okay, then we can oh, press the button again. Then we put it onto the shape board and let it expand 
only to the size of the shape that I want it to be. I don't want it to be any larger than that. Actually, that is too large. I need to tighten that because I forgot I used the other end of the board. If you do something wrong, just take it out of the shape board, rewind it a little bit, and then pop it back into the right size, which is up here. This is a, a size 10, not a 12. Okay, let it just sit there for a little minute, and then I'll show you what we have to do next. What we're going to do is join six of the teardrops to make the center, and then once that is dried, it doesn't take very long to dry because we're only using the smallest of smallest dots to seal these up, and it only takes um, half a minute to dry. So bringing over my little trusty dusty bottle. Let's hope I've got it all unopened. Unopened? Oh duh, Ruth, let's hope it's running smoothly. Sometimes it takes a little while. Yep, beautiful. Okay, so we'll take that out of there. And I like to put just the finest of little lines of glue close to the edge. Because what I do then is sweep it up with the edge of the the little needle glue, glue needle whatever you want to call it, the spout. Okay. And remember, with if you're using these, put the lid on every time because otherwise it's going to seal up on you very, very quickly. Now, because I have got awkward fingers, I like to hold it down with my reverse tweezers. Reverse tweezers being ones that you pinch to open and then let go to close. And it only takes as I said, half a minute to grab. I was trying to think of the, a word I could use. Okay, now because I like to have my points where I have joined so that you can't see them when you've actually made your snowflake, I will put my tweezer at the opposite end and hold the center down. Then, just carefully pinch and it makes that pretty little teardrop shape so now this is all ready to join into this shape so let's give it a go now we need two straight ones a little bit of glue down the center Come on. Why are you doing this to me? It's a little bit more than I needed, but it will grab very quickly. running repair here, put it back on where it's supposed to be, and hope it doesn't come off again, go down below there, okay, now two more, put one like that, sometimes it's a lot easier to pick these up with your tweezer and put them into rough place so that you know where you're going. Okay, yep, that's going to work. All right, now, a little bit of glue there, a little bit on that side so that it's ready for the next piece to take hold, and then down the center so that it grabs in the, the middle where we would need it to go. Now remember we've already got a bit of glue on that side so we don't need to do it on both sides just down the middle and a little bit on that side. As you can see it's not very much glue but it really holds it well and I've just glued the wrong side so change the angle of the tweezer
Sometimes they don't always go down to the very, very middle, but don't let that stress you because we're going to cover it up with a piece of pretty bling. Okay, now for the next one. I'm sorry my big hands get in the way a little bit of this, but this really is a fairly intricate thing that we're doing and I haven't got an overhead camera yet. I did mention it to one of my boys, so hopefully he will do something about it for me and make me a camera stand, which would be really, really awesome. I don't know how long it'll take him because he's very busy with his own projects. But we'll see. We will see. And you give it a little bit of a poke and a shove. For something pretty delicate, you can, you know, manhandle it a reasonable amount if you're not happy with where it's sitting. That is, until it grabs and dries. Okay, so that is the centerpiece around here. And to finish it off, we're going to use the same size and put them in that way. We could, if we really wanted to, change it and have the snowflake going that way, which I think would look quite lovely anyway, so I think we'll do that. Change the pattern around a little, never mind, it works, which makes it this one that we're going to make, not the white one. Okay, so that's what we're going to end up with. All right, let's get on to it. Get those out of the way, because otherwise I'm going to think I've done it, and I'm going to pick it up and look an absolute goose because it's not glued in place. Get over there, you. All of you, move. That was good. Did you like that? I thought I was being very clever then. Didn't have my tweezer down far enough into the piece of paper, did I? What a goose. Now, I've learned by mistake not to glue down the centre of this one because there's no place for it to go. Because the centre actually sits in the gap. So, about a quarter inch away from the centre. That's probably a little more than I needed. It's more than a quarter inch, I think. Yes, it is wipe that off and start again. That's probably a lot better. Put the lid on, you preach, practice what you preach. Let me get round to the last one. The first one and the second one are dry, which is really good. Well, they're nearly all dry by that time. Because, like I said, this does not take long because it's only just the tiniest little bit of glue you're using. I've done scrapbooking pages, I've made cards, I've made the snowflakes all on, and I only filled it up to here. So I've used one third of it on all of those projects. It's really an economical way of gluing because you're not using any more than you absolutely need to. Okay, this is going really well. I'm very pleased with this. 
I'm not going to tie the string on today because I forgot to bring it over with me, so you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit. So my apologies for that. But I did bring the gems, so I, I did do something. Did do something the right way. I made my gem finding so much easier a few years ago. I had some little jars that I had bought multicolored gems in, and I sorted them all out into their different colors, which gave me empty jars. So I put them all back in to, you know, white in white, green in green, um, not so much white, but clear, um, pinks and blues and reds and purples and all that sort of stuff. And I decorated the little jars. I'll show you one of them because they really look lovely when they're sitting on your candy station shelf. And if you haven't heard of a candy station or a candy bar, it's not where you buy sweets. Not in the crafting world. A candy station is where you put all your pretties. Things that people make you, things that you make and you've impressed yourself with. Um, you know, little jars that you've done that look pretty. It's just somewhere that you can get easy access to these things and have the things looking absolutely lovely. So I'll show you that when I finish putting these pieces in, we'll give it half a second to dry while I'm chatting about the little jar. It might be something that you might like to copy. I don't mind if you do. Before I haven't got the candy station set up as such here because I honestly don't have the room But I do have a little cupboard and I've got all my pretties Inside it and I've got my pin cushions on top of it. So it is really a candy station But it's just not all visible Because where I have it is in the hallway and there's a um, an old-fashioned coat rack on the wall above it so I don't have a lot of space to put shelves where I can see but I know what's in my cupboard okay there is the snowflake is it completed now we'll just let that sit and dry for half a minute while I show you the little jar it had the plain top on it and I'll just open it up so no, it's not a pepper and salt shaker but you could use little glass pepper and salt shakers just put a tiny wee piece of pretty paper on the inside to cover up the hole so dust can't get into your pretties and there's some of my white gemstones all different sizes all different shapes it's just a wonderful way of sorting out what you've got on the top of the lid I put the color stone that is inside or gem sorry not stone but gem now the fun part is always getting the lid to go back on straight doesn't want to do it for some reason. Here we go. Good, 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 good. Okay, so around the side of the lid, a little piece of lace and some diamantes that I got, or actually little gemstones, they've got little holes in them. They don't have stones in them at all. They're just sort of silver and coloured holes, basically, sort of like concave dips. A little piece of ribbon made in, a piece of lace made into a ribbon, a tiny little flower, the gems on top, a little clear button, and there's a little button under that one. That's a vintage one. You don't often find buttons these days with writing on the outside. Then I've layered lace. There's one, two, three layers of lace, and it's all from there to there, that wide. Lifting that up so you can see. One of my crochet doilies on the front. Some little hearts. Another tiny little flower to bring that one in. Another one there, and this beautiful little bow that I received in a rack or a challenge where ladies used to send all sorts of gizmos to you, all sorts of little goodies, and it's absolutely wonderful. But I've got about half a dozen of these little jars all decked out with the different colour gems in them, and it's so easy. All I do is pull out the little tray, look for the colour gems, and I pull the container out and use it. So that's what I mean about a candy station. You can 
have it in little containers, but it still looks pretty rather than just having a blob of stuff or jars full of mixed stuff that you have to go through. Sort it out so that it makes it easy for you later on. Okay, back to this. We can pick it up, we can move it around. It's dry. So now I don't think I can get those into it because they've got... No, they're not going to sit right. So we'll use the stars. Okay, a little bit of glue in there. This will also help to reinforce your joins because the glue will sink down a little bit. Give it a fairly good amount because you're asking it to stick to fine paper and it is a different texture. These are plastic, we're sticking plastic to paper. Just the minimal of pressure, just enough to ask the glue to take it on board. I'll turn that round a little bit, I think, so that we get the glue from a couple of the joins. Yadi yadi ya. And turning it over. And then we do the same on this side. Glue on the joins. And up one side. Up two sides, actually. Because you've got three or four little pieces of paper next to each other there. It's a good idea to put some glue onto them both sides. Onto them both sides? Onto both sides. Ooh, my teacher friend would have a fit if she heard me say that. And she probably will. Because she does watch my videos. Doesn't comment, but she watches and then she lets me know about it. You said. I just grin and say, yes, dear, I know. Okay. Put some pressure on that one. fair amount of pressure on this because it's being sandwiched by the the two plastic stars so it doesn't matter how much pressure you put on it. As long as you're not using a 50 pound sledgehammer it should be okay. Alright. And there my lovelies is our little snowflake. I do hope you give it a try and please let me know how successful you are. You don't have to have one of these fancy dancy things. I just am lucky to have one. If you have a normal needle quiller, I've got some paper here. I'll show you how slow it is in comparison to using the battery rum one. Keep in mind, my fingers are not as efficient as they used to be. So you can imagine what it's like making flowers this way. There are ladies who are extremely efficient at this, and I give them, you know, kudos and 10 out of 10 for their ability to do it because I'm just so jealous I can't do it that way any longer. But my quilling machine is absolutely beautiful. I love it. It's so slow in comparison, isn't it? <laughs> but it gets there. It gets there. If you've got full dexterity in your fingers, you can do it a little bit faster than me. Okay, and just slide it off. Tamp it down, make sure it's all right. And then pop it into the board. Okay, there it is. All right, lovelies, there's the snowflake once again. Thank you so much for joining in. I do hope you give all your family and your loved ones a great big hug and a kiss. Tell them you love them. You never know what tomorrow is going to bring. Live life to the fullest each day and enjoy. Bye-bye for now, folks.